Nerds for Knowledge here. And I'm Audrey. And this is our second part of the Star Trek Attack Wing uh, videos. If you have not seen the first part, it's our intro, gameplay, and mechanics overview video. Uh, I would recommend taking a look at it if you're not familiar with the game. It'll be in the playlist next to us. However, if you are familiar with the game, uh, or you've seen it, then we are going to give you an objective critique, analysis of this game, and then our very subjective reviews and recommendations. So, so uh, starting off, let's talk quality and quantity as far as, you know, what are you getting for what you're paying. The very obvious comparison here is Star Wars X-Wing. They're about the same price, um, the boosters, uh, in many cases, can be around the same price. Quality of the components themselves. The ships are not painted as well. However, they are much more sturdily built than the X-Wing sculpts. They're not as fine detailed, which in many cases is actually a good thing because they stay together. They can get jostled around a bit. Not everything has to be battle foamed up. Um, however, if you like painting, this is actually great because the amount of even just a little repainting can make these ships look really, really nice. I've seen a lot of different paint jobs. And if you like painting and you like ships, spaceships, starships, this is definitely a game for you. Okay missions? Yeah, there are missions and they come with the ships. So every ship that you buy comes with its own unique mission. And the missions um, are reflective of different television scenarios or, uh, or different things that happen in the different Star Trek movies. Mm -hmm. So you actually get a chance to sort of replay that within the game. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it gives you a little something different to do rather than just, you know, sticking your ships out there and... And shooting at each other. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then finally, storage. <laughs> well, it is a miniatures game, so depending on how many miniatures you buy, they're not going to fit in the original box. It's just how it goes. You are going to have to get something, a small fishing tackle box or a larger toolbox with subdivisions. Plano is a very popular company for that. But here's a bigger issue. And X-Wing does this, D&D &D Attack Wing. If you'll notice right here, this is clear. Initially, there was nothing here. It was a cardboard box with a cutout because they can display their product and you want to buy it because of the ships. The problem being that it's incredibly impractical for storage. Nice, easy solution. Just put a couple of strips of masking tape across the front or packing tape across the front. Masking tape. <laughs> packing tape across amazing. the front. Amazing. And then a couple across the back to stop from sticking. And then you have a box that, at worst, can be used for the overflow from all the other stuff you're buying because it is collectible. Okay. So, as far as gameplay mechanics go, uh, with what works, theme. There is a very heavy Star Trek theme here. No, it's not Gene Roddenberry Star Trek. It's people flying around shooting each other. That's the game for the most part. Um, but as far as relating to you what it is like to have these starship battles take place, especially with those scenario cards that come and give you the opportunity to replay those um, replay those episodes and those TV shows or those episodes and those movies, the ones that come with the ships are the episodes of the movies that those ships were in. So in that case, along with the crew and everything else, very, very thematic. It works on theme. Um, and there's a lot of interaction because you get a fair number of cards with each ship. The ability to uh, bounce crew abilities off captain abilities, off ship abilities, and do all these things, the interaction is very, very high. So for those who like thoughtful, deep, play as far as putting together your fleets and everything, or your squadrons, it, it's definitely good for that type of gamer. Now on the flip side of both of those points, first of all, theme, you have to be very careful in the way that you set it up because 
even though I agree that especially with the mission cards, it is a very uh, thematic game, you have the potential to really break that theme and do kind of wonky things with it. For example, as you saw in our gameplay, uh, Jean-Luc Picard was piloting the first USS Enterprise. That's right, because he had a very good power that might help keep me alive. Right. But, uh, you know, but you obviously, I mean, you can do anything with that. You're talking about that. I mean, you could take that to extremes. There are ships that have Dominion and Romulan and Federation and Borg all on them, and, and that's not going to happen in Star Trek. Right. So, yes, you can definitely break the theme. And all of those interactions could potentially be um, game lengthening. Because the more cards you have sitting out there and the more potential interaction and thinking you have to do, if you're not someone who is entirely familiar with the game or comfortable with all the mechanics, it's going to increase the length of time that it takes to set up the game and it's going to increase the length of time that it takes to play Well, it. yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you've said a lot of it, but just in direct contrast to the, the deep and thoughtful interactions that mm -hmm. can occur within the game, uh, I know when we were playing, especially in some of our initial games, there were a lot of missed interactions. Yes, so that's true. you do have to be very conscientious about everything that you have going on within the game. It, it's it is a fairly complex game. It's true, and it's not as simple as just my ship is moving here and shooting you. That's for sure. There's a lot more going on. Well, then there are the ships themselves. Some of them are. Yeah, some of them are definitely. Better than better than others. So. Uh, yeah, not not just for their abilities, but the co the whole costing formula: two points per stat per ship is not ideal. Uh, on the lower end of ships, it's not that bad, but the the higher the points get, the more broken your stats can be. Um, and that's due to things like statistics and probability. So for those of you math people. This might drive you nuts. That's right. I've made a spreadsheet on it. It's on Board Game Geek. You can check it out. So as I mentioned earlier, strategy in this game is fairly deep and fairly complex. It's not as... the rules themselves are not as deep as some miniatures games and some, and some like, war game, war games where, you know, there's 500 page rule books. We've mm -hmm. talked about this yeah. before with Battle Lore. Uh, but there is still a lot to think about because it's also faster paced. This is not something that takes 12 hours to complete. This is a game where you can have two people play and have it be over in 20 minutes, or an hour. It really depends on how your ships are all doing and how tactical it is. Um, but as far as strategy goes, there are, there are a couple main points. Building, there is fleet building. Fleet building is essentially the half of the game that is most important in some ways, but has nothing to do with actually playing. Because there's no interaction there. You're taking a look and seeing, you know, is am I going to be playing in this particular type of scenario, or am I just going to play, you know, head to head, just fighting, duking it out, or what's it going to be? And then based on that, you build a fleet. And are you going to build a, a swarm, or are you going to load up one ship with 18 different cards and make it a hundred point ship out of a 30 point ship? Like, what are you going to do? Um, there is a lot that goes into building because you have to consider how all the cards interact, what you're hoping each ship is going to do, and how you're hoping you are going to, uh, how you're going to mitigate whatever your enemy uh, or the environment in some OP scenarios uh, is going to do to your ship, what those things are going to do to your ship. So this is all stuff that you have to think about, and so the building part is very important. And then, after that, you finally get the ships on the table, and then you have to start worrying about movement and actions. Mm, yeah, and movement is, I mean, it's, obviously there's a lot of strategy within the way that you're moving. Um, are you laughing? At no, me? I wasn't laughing. I was thinking about all the strategy in, in the, your movements. Oh, that is so <laughs> cruel. Yes, I, I have none. It's, it's just... I pray and I cross my fingers that my ships will eventually get you within their firing range. This is so sad. 
I'm probably not qualified to speak about this. No, no, no. It's good. I mean, it's it's good that we showed them the different things you can do with shifts. <laughs> Some because, of them were by accident. <laughs> that's right. You will have noticed that Audrey sometimes, a couple of times, bumped her own ships. That's not something that you want to normally do mm -hmm. because you lose action. And right. actions are a very important economy in this game because you have to have, you, you need those actions to, mm, a lot of crew give you these actions or your captain give you these actions or the ship and you want to use them to your advantage. It's the reason that you've chosen the crew or the captain of the ship sure. or are these actions that you're going to be able to perform. And so as far as flight, flying tactics, you know, movement tactics, if you're just one big ship, keep them in your firing arc, which for the Borg, it's not that hard. Because um, you have no firing arc, it's just fire wherever you want. But well, when you're four different ships... When you're four different ships, it you have options. Do you split up? Do you stay together and focus fire? Uh, another, popular thing, another popular strategy is to bump the other person's ship. Use some of your ships to bump that person's ships to keep them in your firing arc and keep them where you want them, to limit their movement and their actions. Do you just spin the wheel and... <laughs> and just see what, what happens. See what that's happens. Right. See what that's happens. that's what it looked like I was doing. No. I promise was, I wasn't. It was good. Uh, but yeah, so actions, movement, and building, these are all very, very uh, strategic parts of this game and do require a lot of thought, both forethought, and then, you know, kind of the ability to respond to the situation as it comes up. And spatial intelligence. Yes, and it definitely requires spatial intelligence. So this is, uh, this is a complex game and does require some, uh, a, a gamer who enjoys strategy. Mm -hmm. Who enjoys strategizing in all those different ways. So, replayability. Is this replayable, Audrey? Yes. Yes, it is, Weston. Thank you. I think it's replayable. It definitely is. It is. No, I, and I mean for a number of reasons. Uh, the sheer n number of ships, I mean it depends on how many you buy, of course, but the ships themselves give you more variety, more cards, more interaction. Uh, the number of possible fleets you can build is literally astronomically high. Uh, so, you know, there's no reason to even go into that. It's like trillions, long trillions. Well, plus, there are so many options for the number of people you play it. Mm -hmm. um, That's true. You know, we demonstrated two people, but you can certainly play with more than two. Mm -hmm. You can even play in teams. That's and true. and there's, there's a solo mission. You can invent solo missions, too. I mean, it's possible to play on your own. Just take your little ships and fly, <laughs> fly around the room. That's right. Well. I don't mean to insinuate that playing a game by yourself is... No. Some games are meant to be played on Sol their own. Solitaire. Solitaire. Ambush, that's one. Um, Castle Panic. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. But yeah, no, this, so this is... That by so this is, it's fun. Um, yeah, so this is definitely a very replayable game. The, 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 all the new missions that they give you, the ships, the interaction, the ways you can play it, one to, you know, six people if you do it the right... It, uh, it's really very replayable game. So overall, the total value that you're getting... Oh. Out of this thing is is good, you know the initial starter box for forty, although you can get it some places for thirty or even the high twenties. Uh, very good, and then the ships at ten to fifteen bucks each, depending on where you get them, I think is entirely fair. I wrote here, I love it, and Audrey doesn't. It's not entirely. Uh, okay, I really like the game. I like Star Trek. I like the ships from Star Trek. I like the ability to create fleets. I tend to play uh, penalty pure, so no cross faction. So you said it was weird having Jean Luc on the original yeah. Enterprise, but at least it was Federation with Federation. Oh, I okay. wasn't doing You're not you know, stick like a Klingon on there. Not normally, yeah. unless you know, unless I feel it, it would work somehow with a theme based on the movie, like you know, sticking. Like they commandeered the ship. Like they commandeered the HMS Bounty. And, you know, doing that stuff. But other than that, I think it's a wonderful game. It's definitely had problems uh, with overpowered ships and broken combinations. WizKids has finally started to step in and do something about that with 
all the new rules that they put up on the uh, on their new rules forums and the errating and everything. So it's 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 been a step in the right direction at least. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, you know, he says Audrey doesn't love it. I, I think the keyword there is love. It's not that I don't like this game. It's just that. I struggle so much with moving the ships. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I, like I said, I feel like I have no spatial intelligence because I sit there and I think if I pick this one, it's going to end up right there. And somehow every time I do that, it ends up in a completely different spot. <laughs> it's like, I think my ship's going here and oh no, it ended up over there. Not sure how that happened. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Uh, I don't know. What about the gameplay itself? Do you like? I mean, I mean, it's it's such a cool idea. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's not really a new idea, but it's super fun. You know, moving your ships around the table yeah. and, um, you know, I I love the idea of the building and and choosing your own ships and like you said, even with the missions. I mean, there's so many possibilities that just make it really interesting, especially. Mm -hmm when you're replaying some of your favorite episodes or favorite movie moments, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or movie missions, I guess. I mean, that that definitely adds to the enjoyment, especially if you're a Star Trek fan. But, mm -hmm. like I said, I just... I, I get so frustrated because, especially in the gameplay that we did, mm -hmm. I should have beat you within a couple of turns, and it took me forever. It almost didn't happen. Yeah, almost got I almost got away. And because of my ineptitude fun. No. in yeah. moving in moving the ships. Not even in like choosing to attack or the no. interactions. No, no, no. It is just purely in my inability to move the ships to the right part of the table to shoot you. But would you recommend this to other people? People who, who can move the ships in the right time. People with some sort of spatial intelligence... And the willingness to although as an educator as an educator I will say perhaps this game might be a good way to build spatial intelligence because maybe over time I might acquire the ability oh yeah to visualize and, and accurately visualize where my ships go I think you could definitely improve it because I've I even over the over the time that I've been playing with other people other than you know just here at home uh, have definitely noticed my ability to maneuver my ships the way I want to, and especially in response to the changing environment of their ships on the table, okay. has improved. And I think that's another part of it, is you have to think ahead. Where mm -hmm. is my opponent going to be moving his ships? Yeah. And that requires, I think, a fair knowledge of the game already. Sure. So sure. when you start out, unless you are very, very spatially aware... Yeah, it's not going to work. Hard. It's not going to work out well at first. You are probably just going to lose. But you build, you build, oh, wow. and and then you That's so work. Oh, you know, and then you work you towards play. getting better. Unless you play with someone else who has no idea what they're doing, in which case you can both lose together. <laughs> Your ships will so, just fly off the table. That's right. They'll just explode randomly. Warp core breach. Um. So, other games that are like this game in the same genre and price range, you have X-Wing. Mm -hmm. I like Attack Wing better, partly for the theme. Really, the difference between X-Wing and Attack Wing, what IP do you like? Whichever IP you like, you pick that one. What is IP? Intellectual property. What does that mean? Star Wars is intellectual property. Star Trek is intellectual property. All the Disney movies are there oh, intellectual okay. property. Who uses so, that abbreviation? Everybody. Except me? Yeah. Well, now I'm going to use it. Okay. Uh, yeah. All the time. So depending on which IP you like, that's the one, honestly, you should choose. If you love Star Wars, pick Star Wars. If you love uh, Star Trek, pick Star Trek. Uh, but you also have Dungeons & Dragons Attack Wing. That adds a whole new uh, perspective on this by adding in, well, first of all, you get giant dragons, so. That's that cool. awesome. Giant dragons. <laughs> what else? <laughs> and then ground troops as well, like giant frost giants and and elf wizards and I things like that. I that game. That sounds really cool. You know, I bought the base game and then I returned it because I figured I'd rather spend the money on more ships or other things rather than 
a whole new other collectible game. Mm. But if you want to, we can pick some up. So we'll probably pick that up at some point. Um, Frost Giants? Yeah, Frost Giant. That's awesome. Yeah, well, okay, we can pick some up. Okay. It'll be fun. Uh, and then Sails of Glory, somewhat similar, but definitely much more naval and set in the sea. And then finally, we have really any miniatures game. Because they're all collectible to, to an extent, and they all require you to put some money into them. So if you want to play a miniatures game, pick what you're passionate about. If you like Star Wars, if you like Star Trek, if you like D&D, &D, if you just like whatever other fantasy, go ahead and go for it. But if you're a big fan of space and you like a lot of deep strategy, Star Trek is definitely deeper in strategy than Star Wars. So, really? yes. Why? It's because of the sheer number of possibilities you have with building your ships and building your fleets. You don't have everything. all those possibilities in Star Wars? No, it's not. It doesn't work exactly the oh, same. It's, okay. it, it definitely so requires well. some thought, but it does not require the same depth. It does not have the same depth as Is it more um, like Attack Wing? Like prearranged, like if you pick this ship, these are the people that are on it, or there's just one pilot or ship. It's because they're, oh, okay. and then you can put weapons on it, but a lot of people don't do that. And it's, oh, okay, yeah. It's more maneuverable. It's more dogfighty, but it's other than that, yeah. So, in my opinion, Star Trek is the way to go um, for these type of games at this price. But pick whatever intellectual property or IP love, or IP you really like. So, anyway, this is Weston. And I'm Audrey. And I'm saying go out and buy this game, because one day you may find yourself on a starship, and if you run into another starship, you may have to shoot them. So it's good to know how to do it. What? In miniature form. No, for real. We're going to Mars, yo. Mars. Because if you ended up in a starship... I bet there would be a little computer that says hard right three that you would press. And then your opponent, at the same time, would do the same thing. That's right. And then you press agility and fire. Yeah. And then depending on who has the higher... What's the number? Okay. So anyways. Yes. Higher I'm... priority. That's Robo Rally, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Captain skill, though. That's a thing. Captain skill. Whoever has the highest captain skill... That person moves first, and then they wait, and then the other starship is going to move. I'm Weston. And I'm Audrey. And I'm saying, go out and play with little toy spaceships, because it's really, really fun. And I'm saying, I want to play with the big frost giants. We'll settle this later. Have a nice Thanksgiving, and yeah, if Thanksgiving's nice. over, Christmas, and if Christmas is over, New Year's, and if it's already next year, whatever the next holiday is.